Hi, Dennis Banda here. In 2016, I won the Zambezi Magic Z Top 10 presenter search where I walked away with the grand prize of 50,000 kwacha. I then went on to host the show Z Top 10, a music video countdown show from October 2016 to January 2017. Unfortunately, my contract was not renewed, and for the last four years, ever since, I have been traveling in and out of South Africa, performing in different club and comedy venues, and also for work. Now, to this video, the Zambian Music Awards. What happened? What went wrong? Well, the Zambian Music Awards were an award ceremony organized and hosted by Morsi Laga and Zambian breweries that awarded the best in Zambian music and Zambian entertainment. And we're close to revealing the best song of the year. And the winner is... Karen! I would like to thank the Lora House guys, Chungu, Abel Chungu Musuka, Mag44, who is my producer. To our winner. Now, as amazing as the ZMAs were at the time, some artists were not satisfied with the Zambia Music Awards and Morsi Laga. Various complaints from the industry, the most notable from the dopest, freshest name in the game, MK Maki 2, aka Flavor Boy, aka Michael Chief Shasata Jr., aka I put the final nail in the coffin of the ZMAs. Well, Mr. Maki 2, King Booger himself, had this to say about the Zambia Music Awards. In view of the above, we demand for the following. Number one, the fourth Mosi Music Awards be held in a city outside Lusaka. Number two, the money for the awards be revised with minimum being 15,000 kwacha. Number three, each province must be recognized by awarding the most active and talented artist in respective provinces. Failure to address these concerns, no credible music artist will be part of this year's awards and instead of certain individuals siphoning money from Zambia breweries in our name, let them do it in their own names by Zambian musicians, Kale Bwangu. Now, let's break down that post, the complaints from Makitu about the Zambian Music Awards. The grand prize, the prize of each award of the ZMAs. He says they were getting three to 5,000 kwacha, and he said they wanted to be getting at least 15,000 kwacha per award. Does Makitu not know that in the U.S., for most, in fact, all the award ceremonies, the major ones, the Grammys, the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the Emmys, there is no money attached to those awards. Now, we're going to be using um, the Grammys as a benchmark for this video because the Grammys are the biggest music award ceremony in the world. Now, we look at the Grammys. No prize money attached to the Grammys. Nothing. People just attend because the Grammys come with prestige. When you're in a Grammy Award, when Bruno Mars wins a Grammy, for example, if his booking fee is $100,000, after he wins five Grammys that night, the following day, immediately, his booking price goes up. From $100,000, he's going to start charging two hundred, maybe even $300,000 for a show. The same applies if you won a ZMA. You should have just been changing the booking fee. If you're getting 200 kwacha for a gig, from 200 kwacha, you start charging people one pin. That's what the awards are supposed to be for. Now, at the time, this was in an era where there wasn't really much money in Zambian music, man. No companies were coming on board to sponsor these guys. Companies like One Bet did not exist. Nexus were not as impactful as they are today. There was no KMP funding these guys. You know, uh, Yango wasn't there to transport these artists even if they didn't have a car. So, I mean, they were hungry. And Mosi Laga were like the only big brand that were willing to pump in money into these guys. And then they still went ahead and complained and said, we want more money. Signed, Zambian musicians. That's not how award ceremonies work, man. You're never ever going to see Beyonce or Jay-Z, for example, be like, yo, I'm a rich man. I'm living in this mansion in L.A. because I won 20 Grammys. No, they've got that much money. Because of touring, because of streaming, because of CD sales, not because of awards. Awards are not for money. Awards are for prestige. The other complaint Maki 2 and the other Zambian musicians raised in that rant, the location of the Zambian Music Awards. They wanted them moved away from Lusaka to another province. Now, moving awards away from Lusaka here in Zambia would be a logistics nightmare. Now, the thing with entertainment is, 
Each country has its own entertainment hubs. It has its own regions. Even the United States, as big as it is, for the last 20 years, remember we're using the Grammys as the benchmark for this video. For the last 20 years, the Grammys have only been held in three different locations. Los Angeles, New York, Las Vegas. The US only has two regions for entertainment. New York, LA. All the big TV shows, all the big radio stations, Fallon, Corden, Kimmel, Colbert, John Oliver, The Daily Show, it's either you're in New York or you're in Los Angeles. Even someone like Eminem, for example, he lives in Detroit. But if you want to push your music when it's time to promote your album, Los Angeles, New York. Same with Adele. She lives in the UK. But then when it's time to promote her album, Los Angeles, New York. You go to the Breakfast Club in New York. You go to Jimmy Fallon in Los Angeles. That's where all the magic happens. Even in South Africa. South Africa only has one hub for entertainment, and this is Johannesburg. This is where all the major radio stations are. This is where DSTV HQ is. This is where you're going to find Trace. Everything is in Joburg. So suggesting that you move the awards away from Lusaka because you have an inferiority complex, that's not it, Chief. Even in South Africa, Casper Nyovest had to move from Mafikeng to start staying in Johannesburg, in Midland, because that's where the hub is. That's where everything happens. Burner Boy. He had to touch base in SA at one point before he became the world's biggest artist as of this recording. Prove me wrong. Nobody is bigger than him right now. Not even Chris Brown. You have to touch base in SA. The way it is, is if you make it in SA, you've made it in Africa. If you've made it in the US, you've made it in the world. But where in SA do you make it? You make it in Tropic. Where in the US do you make it? You make it in LA, you make it in New York. LA is where all the, most of the movie studios are. Like, that's where the admin stuff is. Yes, maybe they'll shoot in different regions of the country, different regions of the world, but the promotion and everything, it's Los Angeles, New York. So the whole thing of, no, let us move the awards from Lusaka. Dumb idea. The third complaint Makitu and the Zambia musicians raised was, let us award uh, the best musician from every province in the country. I've been following entertainment my whole life and I've never seen an award ceremony where they award an artist from each state in the US, like Best Alabama, Best Alaska. And uh, the winner of uh, Best Texas goes to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Best California. No, man, no, man. That's, that's a ridiculous idea, man. It's ridiculous. You know, people from the Copper Belt here in Zambia with their inferiority complex, they behave like black people in the U.S., you know, like, oh, black lives matter. Like, I mean, it's even an insult to compare black lives matter to Copala lives or Copala musicians matter in Lusaka, you know. So, <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. I saw the Quacha Music Awards, though. They did implement uh, the whole provincial category thing, best central, best southern, best Lusaka, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, even a guy like Dreams, who would win that award all the time for Best Central, he's on, he's on record for pulling out and saying, look, I'm bigger than this award, you know. Meanwhile, you go down south, the best southern province, King Illest is winning that award year in, year out. Hmm? Maybe even 20 years from now, like, the award cabinet is just going to be full of Best Southern, Best Southern, Best Southern, Best Southern, like, nobody's serious, like, awards provinces or regions or states, man. Come on, come on. So now, what's the fallout from the Zambian Music Awards? What happened? As of 2017, Mosi Laga and Zambian Breweries discontinued the Zambian Music Awards, obviously because of the controversy and the complaints from these guys. And uh, as of 2017, Mosi Laga have focused uh, their resources on Day of Thunder instead, which is held in Livingston every year where they bring in uh, international acts and local acts as well. Now, from my little experience of working in the corporate world, you can't reason with corporates with emotions and going on rants on Facebook, typing all sorts of essays and paragraphs. It doesn't work like that. If you've got a legitimate complaint, organize a meeting, go to their offices, sit with them in the boardroom and try to raise some of these complaints, you know, or do it like in writing. Send them an email, you know, send them a letter. Don't do it like that. Don't try to publicly drag them. It's... It rarely goes well, and I actually still stand by by those things that I was saying, man. Like, Makitu and the rest of the Zambian musicians, those demands, 
ridiculous, ridiculous. The Zambian Music Awards should have still been here, I believe. They were the best thing that happened to Zambian music in a long time. The award ceremonies that we have today, Kwacha Music Awards, Diamond TV Awards, they are nowhere near the production that the Zambian Music Awards had. So it seems the main concern and the main focus of the artists was money, 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 money. How do we make money? How do we feed our families? Well, there's many ways as a Zambian musician you can make money. First of all, selling your music. Now the thing is, CDs now are dead, cassette tapes are dead. Nobody really listens to CDs anymore. So how do you increase your funding? How do you make your money? You focus on streaming. Now what are some of the major streaming platforms, music platforms that are there now? Spotify, Apple Music. Get your music on those platforms and uh, you get some money from uh, the streams that you get. Now, you only make something substantial when you get millions of streams and the population of Zambia doesn't really work in our favor. So we really need serious sensitization, especially to the lower income people in Zambia because those are the main fans of Zambian music, not the bougie guys who are staying in Makeni, in Rhodes Park. Yeah, they have Spotify on their phones, but they're not streaming Zambian music like that. The true hardcore Zambian music fans are the guys in Kalingalinga, the guys in Mutendere, you know. This is where guys like Difficulty should come in and bring awareness and sensitization, you know. Go in the streets, do these road shows. Yemwe, Chitani Streamy, Yomapsi, Pa Spotify, Spotify, Mui Chita Downy Rodi, Pa Fony, Spotify, Apple Music, Ngati Muri the iPhone. And you're gonna see how the streams are gonna go up. At least with YouTube, people are kind of like getting it. You know, we're seeing millions of views. Like, a million views is no longer a big deal in Zambia. I mean, Yomaps does that like piece of cake, man. Like, drop a video. A milli, you know, Maki too, a milli, you know, like ni ni niggas be doing the most, you know. So there's other platforms like Boomplay, which are doing like these exclusive deals with Zambian musicians and giving them like pretty decent deals. But the problem with Boomplay is it's not really like recognized in the regions that matter, like the US or South Africa. Yes, you're the, you're the man on Boomplay, but America still doesn't know you. South Africa still doesn't know you. You know, so I mean, what's the point? And like I said earlier, if South Africa knows you, the whole Africa knows you. If America knows you, the whole world knows you. And if both these regions have no idea who you are, then it's pointless. So we need to focus more on the proper international streaming platforms. The second way Zambian artists can make money for themselves, merchandising. Start selling t-shirts, caps, school bags, mug cups, headsets like Danny Kaya. I mean, <laughs> should I teach you guys everything? <laughs> it's it's that simple, man. Like, you can order your t-shirts from China and then get, like, a dope graphic designer to print, you know, like, your maps. And then you have, like, his face here or something and start selling the merchandise, you know. 50 kwacha a piece, 100 kwacha a piece. And the units would move, man. Like, do local deals. There's a lot of um, local guys who are selling clothes now you get into partnership with these instagram clothing sellers and they get their cut you as an artist you get your cut and yo, you're gonna you're gonna make your money man you're gonna make your money the third way musicians can make their money in zambia is from touring doing their own shows you don't have to sit and wait for rng or digital events to call you for you to have a show no man like you can go to these venues go to chicago's Go to Capone's, go to Royal Park Matero, you know, go and talk to the organizers of these places, the owners of these places and say, look, hi, my name is Benas Banda. I can, I think I can pull 500 people to your venue. I'm going to be here. I'm going to sell tickets, 50 kwacha, all the revenue from Gate is mine, all the revenue from Booze is yours. Or you could do a free show at the, the venue and then you split the revenue from uh, the Booze sales to say, okay. Latitude 15, I'm going to bring these guys, I'm DJ El Mukuka, he already does that. Um, I'm going to bring 500, 1,000 people to your hotel or to your venue, and then we're going to share the revenue from um, the booze that day. And then the next day, you see the books, the numbers, to say, okay, we sold 500,000 kwacha in alcohol. I'm going to get 100,000, 400,000 remains with the venue. As easy as that. You don't have to sit and wait <laughs> for some of these uh, event organizers to make magic happen for you. 
making your own shows is really working for an artist like Danny Kaya, for example. You know, Danny doesn't just sit there waiting to be booked. You know, he's got the Danny Kaya Music Fest going on, which is like his Super Bowl. It's his World Cup. It's his WrestleMania. You know, he's he's making bank from that, and corporates are jumping on board. You're never gonna see Danny going on podcasts complaining. No, oh, I'm not making money. These youngsters are not appreciating me. <laughs> you know, so he's he's doing his own thing. He's making his own money. You see, Danny also has his headsets. You see, merch. <laughs> the only part where he's lacking is uh, on the streaming platforms. I'm not sure whether he has the rights to his old music from like 2004 or whatever. But I mean, big ups to the guy. He's he's doing fine for himself. Lastly, Zambia Kuchalo, meaning Zambia to the world, has become such a trend in Zambian entertainment and Zambian music. For years we've been local champions and now as fans we are tired. We want to finally break the borders, go beyond borders and become international superstars. Now the question remains, how do we become international? How does our music cross the borders? Well, it's simple. Submit your music to international and TV radio stations. Take your music to Trace. Take your music to MTV. It shouldn't just end in Africa. Submit your music to American radio stations, American TV stations, the UK, Australia. Let's not also underrate the Caribbean, you know. Take your music to South America, to Asia. You never know. Where do you find the details? Just uh, go on the websites of uh, these radio stations, the, on About Us or Contact Us. That information is usually there, you know. I'll give an example of a radio station in SA, like 5FM, for example. 5FM South Africa or Metro FM. They actually have websites, unlike our local radio stations, which don't even have websites. Just go on 5fm.co.za, contact us. You're going to find email addresses and the requirements for you to submit your music to these stations. And boom, you start getting airplay in these stations. Now, on going international, TV and radio, that's traditional media. We're now in 2023, the 21st century. In the era of uh, social media, TikTok is also another way of uh, going viral and going international. And we do have an artist who has millions of streams on Spotify, on YouTube right now, thanks to a TikTok challenge. He goes by the name Killer, in case you don't know. Killer is a rapper from right here in Lusaka who went viral after jumping on a TikTok challenge by a Canadian rapper, Connor Price. All right, I'm going to spin this globe, and wherever my finger lands, I'm going to find an artist from that country to collaborate with me on a song and see what happens. Zambia. All right. I felt like his style and his voice would sound perfect on the song I'm working on, so I reached out to him, I sent him the beat, and then a few days later, he sent me back this. First thing I'm going to ask you is, you got to spit that verse one more time for the listeners, man. I, got, I need you to spit. I need them to hear you spit that verse. No, a lot of people pray for my downfall, but the only thing that I'll be down for is being top five, but like down four. I'm down to earth like the ground floor, but I've been flying so long. I tend to ask people, what's the ground floor? Man, I'm only headed up. See, my flow bomb can't this the fire. I ain't rough. Turn the fans getting rowdy because they haven't had enough. You know, I'm running the city. You just running out of luck. You right now are the man of the moment. You're the one who's carrying the Zambian flag uh, across the whole globe. How do you capitalize on this moment and make this a moment where we can realize that, no pun intended, there are more killers out there in Zambia? <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? As the guy waving the Zambian flag right now. <laughs> As the guy, the guy. That's our band right there. And yet, people don't even know who he is here. <laughs> now, Killer, as of this recording, has more monthly listeners on Spotify than all your favorite artists. Killer currently has 1.6 million monthly listeners on Spotify. To put this in perspective, South Africa's biggest hip-hop act, Casper Nyovest, has 302,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Even Nasty C doesn't have as many monthly listeners as Killer. Killer has 1.6 million monthly listeners. Nasty C has 1.4 million monthly listeners. Killer also has more monthly listeners than Focalistic, who is currently on 1.2 million monthly listeners. I know what you're thinking. What about Sampa the Great, the lady who featured in the trailer for Black Panther? Well, Sampa the Great also has less monthly listeners than Killer, with 636,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. And Zambia's biggest artist, your boy, your maps, only at 102,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. 
And now our biggest award show in Zambia right now for music, the Kwacha Music Awards. They actually do have a category for Zambian musicians who are doing the most outside Zambia. Best international achievement. And yet Killer is nowhere to be seen on that list. Let's see who got nominated instead. Kwacha Music Awards 2023 Best International Achievement. Who do we got? Who do we got? Okay, so we have Cleo Ice Queen. Well, yeah, Cleo Ice Queen was signed, always signed to Def Jam. First Zambian artist to be signed to Def Jam. Such a big deal. Nobody has ever done it before her. She deserves to be there. Roberto, yeah, Amarula is a very big song. It's the only song from Zambia that some people from outside Zambia know. So Amarula is still doing the rounds so many years later. Sampa the Great, yeah, she's performed on the biggest stages in the world. Coachella. Her music is in video games, FIFA, her music is on Netflix shows such as Ozark. I mean, I could go on and on about Sampa. j Rocks, yeah, he's doing the most in East Africa. He's a big deal there. Slab D, he did have a lecture at uh, Harvard Business School in the United States. So, yeah, I mean, he deserves it. Maki 2, not for the music, but for film. His show won an award at the Africa Music Viewers Choice Awards for Best Reality Show, King Booger. So, yeah. Then we have Yo Maps. Yes, he calls himself an international artist, but what has he done to be nominated for Best International Achievement? Calling himself an international artist? Come on, man. Malawi doesn't count. <laughs> Malawi is a region that doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, so many... Zambian music is big in Malawi. I used to meet a lot of <laughs> Malawians when I lived in South Africa. and don't play Zambian music, but I mean, Malawi is... Ugh. Anyway, now I sound like I'm hating... I'm going to give him one thing, though, Yo Maps. He's got a hot wife. He's got a hot wife. He's probably the one that moans during sex, you know. He goes like, ah, 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 ah. At the end of the day, man, Zambian music needs to get its act together, man. The gatekeepers of Zambian music, you know yourselves. Get your shit together, man. You guys are not organized. This is why Zambian film is beating you guys. I mean, look at Can You See Us, for example, which is streaming on Netflix right now was in the top 10 of 13 countries. And these 13 countries include some of the major ones, like the US, Canada, Australia, South Africa, number one in Nigeria, even in places that we least expected, like Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. This movie is in the top 10. Malta in Europe. <laughs> when have you ever heard a Zambian artist being number one in Nigeria, being in the top 10 of the charts in the US? Maybe just killer. Or Sampa the Great, but the traditional guys, the gatekeepers, the ones who are, you know, because <laughs> they're not getting their act together, man. They they don't know how to move, man. Until they change their mentality and then until they start doing things right, they know how to talk to corporates, they know how to get their music out there. We're going to be local champions for a very, very long time. Now, the final reason why we may not be international the lack of major distribution channels here in Zambia. Now, artists from the US, Nigeria, and South Africa have the advantage of being signed to major distribution companies like Sony, Universal, Werner. Now, when you're signed to Sony or Universal, for example, these guys are going to place your music on these major digital platforms for you. They're going to do placements for you on all the major radio stations in the world, in the UK, in the US. You're going to be getting airplay. They're going to push your music, take your music to movies, uh, series, video games. They're going to push for you to perform in big stages like Coachella. Think of Sampa the Great, for example. She is winning because she's, yes, she's Zambian, but she's part of the Australian music industry. She is an Australian artist and she is benefiting from the Australian machine. As much as she refuses, no, but, but, but I'm Zambian, you know, Mac 44 is my producer. I work with my cousin Tio. Yes, but, Austra but you have the Australian machine behind you, you know. So I feel government should reach out to these distribution companies. Let them come to Zambia. Let them come to Lusaka. Let them set base here. Let them sign our artists. Yes, we have a few of our artists who are affiliated to these big brands, like Cleo, who signed to Def Jam, Def Jam, which is an affiliate of the big three distribution companies. So she has the advantage of global music distribution. But 
we need more of that because yes you can be an artist you go into the studio you know how to rap you know how to sing but you don't even know where hot fm is for example you don't know that you have to go there with your cd you find uh, chavula and the team there you have to talk to them give them your music maybe you're going to find a dj at some of these other radio stations who's going to <laughs> so it's 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 a lot that goes on it's a lot that goes on you know i have the privilege of of knowing how it works because i i grew up with musicians in my house i used to see how hard they used to work burning cds not even sleeping just staying up the whole night burning demo cds like getting on a taxi taking them dropping off dropping them off station after station you know please play my music please play my music you don't just drop off one cd you drop off multiple cds to multiple djs it's not easy but if you've got a record label they do that for you if you're part of an international distribution deal they do that for you worldwide so i don't know who's watching the guys who are in government who's who's in government here entertainment pilato kangwachileshe jito kayumba the yo bali you know hh like you guys put your heads together and yeah bring in sony bring in universal it's gonna tackle the issue of unemployment unemployment is high not everybody can have a nine to five job but but these cats can spit though they can burn it in the booth and they can bring pride to zambia i mean if you got a big zambian artist who is top 10 who can sell out arenas in the uk in the us they're gonna raise curiosity and tourism in zambia is going to go high it's gonna go up people are gonna be like yeah i wanna i wanna go to the country that uh, where where cleo is from oh yo this this your maps guy you know oh he's, he's from zambia yo but honey let's let's book a vacation to the victoria falls and see where this, this this guy is from you know what i mean that's that's how it works i mean if if it worked for someone like me i'm inclined to south africa because trevor noah is my guy the late aka are my guys i'm like you know what i want to go see where trevor noah grew up i want to go to soweto i want to go to santon and see where Dallas is from don't you think even guys from within africa if we are big within africa they will want to come to lusaka and then the economics of everything <sighs> you know what i'm saying man be money here out